The First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Thus, the right to lobby the government is enshrined in the First Amendment. Our understanding of Congress and the legislative process is riddled with myths. One myth is that my congressman will take care of my issue. This is false. You and your issue are but one in the pool of hundreds that your congressman has to deal with on a daily basis. In the eyes of the congressman, you are one of many. Another common myth is that since you are a constituent, your issue will be addressed first. False. More people than ever are writing to their lawmakers on a multitude of issues. Many assume that all congressmen are equally powerful. This is false. A congressman's importance is based on many things, such as his or her seniority and committees of assignment. A Congress lasts for two years, which means that every member of the House of Representatives is up for re-election every two years. The House is split between Democrats and Republicans based on election results. Congress is composed of 435 members who serve an average of 700,000 constituents. This means that a congressman has roughly 700,000 individuals with varying viewpoints, backgrounds, and needs to consider on a daily basis. Legislative ideas flow from a multitude of sources, including the administration and its various departments and agencies, individual constituents, district-level organizations, and national special interest groups. The House has over 20 committees, each with their respective subcommittees. Committees are regarded as the workshops of the Congress. Here, legislative initiatives are examined, as are proposed amendments or general resolutions. A feature unique to the House is its right to impeach or indict a federal official. However, the right to try these officials is a power vested in the Senate. Legislative proposals are introduced by members of Congress in one of four principal forms. The bill, the joint resolution, the concurrent resolution, and the simple resolution. The most common of these is the bill. A common misconception is that the President can introduce his own legislation. He, in fact, may not. Instead, the President must rely on a friendly member of Congress to do so. Once legislation is introduced, it is referred to the appropriate committee or committees of jurisdiction for their examination. Once the full committee has approved the bill, it is referred to the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee determines the procedures governing the consideration of the legislation by the House of Representatives. Once the bill is passed out of the House, it is sent to the Senate for consideration. If the House version is approved by the Senate, the bill is transmitted to the President for his signature. However, if the Senate amends the House bill, the House and Senate appoint members from committees of jurisdiction to a conference committee where the differences between the House and Senate versions of the legislation are reconciled. Thereafter, the reconciled legislation is once again sent to each chamber for their approval before being sent to the President for his signature. The Senate is composed of 100 members, two from each state. Each two-year election cycle, one-third of the Senate is up for re-election. The Senate holds several unique powers, including the ability to ratify treaties and confirm presidential appointees. As with the House, the Senate is comprised of over 20 committees, referred to as standing committees, each with their respective subcommittees. Senators hold great power. This means that a single senator can impede or kill legislation as well as block the confirmation of presidential appointees and jeopardize the ratification of treaties. House bills are received by the Office of the Secretary of the Senate and become known as Acts, signifying that it is the act of one body of Congress. The bill is then referred to the appropriate standing Senate committee or committees of jurisdiction. The Senate may also report the bill with or without amendments or table it. Upon passing the bill out of committee, it is sent to the full Senate for consideration. The Senate relies heavily on the practice of obtaining unanimous consent. This means that for an action to be taken as proposed, it must receive no objection. Access is everything, and building a strong network is key to becoming an effective grassroots activist. To get involved, one has many options. Volunteering campaigns. 
This will credit you by increasing your visibility and giving you name recognition with key campaign staff. Know the congressional staff pertinent to your issue. Become familiar with all staff, but with a higher level of concentration on senior staff. Attend town hall meetings hosted by your representative. This will give you a unique opportunity to meet your representative face-to-face -face without the arduous process of scheduling a meeting. Stay in contact via email, phone, mail, and keep up to date through Facebook and Twitter. Share information on your issues regularly. By becoming a familiar and reliable source of information on your issue, you will quickly become a key contact point for staffers. Before attending meetings with congressional offices, it is important that you familiarize yourself with key information. Know the pertinent bill numbers and the contents of the House and Senate versions. Know all the arguments on all sides of your issue. This will illustrate that you are familiar with the politics and the players involved. Know who your allies are and know who your opponents are. This will help in making a coherent strategy for success. Prepare a one-page memo outlining your issue and its relevance to the bill. Keep in mind that congressional staffers are the gatekeepers in congressional offices. They decide what issues get elevated to the congressman's attention and control who gets appointed a meeting and when. If you are part of a group participating in a Washington fly-in, try to arrange an informal reception with a member and their staff, but be mindful of hospitality rules. When attending meetings, bring an articulate spokesperson to be the primary voice of your issue. Bring members from the representative's district that are also affected by your issue. Seek out and bring others outside of the representative's district that are affected by your issue as well. This may also aid in bringing more congressional members to your side. Your team should be comprised of good team players. The group must be cohesive and apt to working together. The legislative process resembles a maze and can be like looking at a roadmap with seemingly endless routes to your destination. As a result, navigating the maze can be a daunting and confusing task. The role of a government affairs professional is to be a guide by being an expert on the legislative process. These individuals are like GPS, guiding you through the legislative maze and helping you find the best route for you and your issue to take. 